Welcome to the America 250 PA Start Here, America Did podcast, telling the unique stories that make up the diverse fabric of Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of the America 250 PA Start Here, America Did podcast series. I'm Cassandra Coleman, and I'm the executive director of America 250 PA. I am excited to share our first Fun Isn't Far Away Pennsylvania Festivals podcast. We will be taking a virtual road trip to the four corners of the Commonwealth to explore four seasons of fun. Subsequent podcasts will feature spring, summer, fall, and winter festivals leading up to and during the 2026 celebrations of the 250th anniversary of the United States. So our guest host today for our fall festival frolic across the Commonwealth is Carrie Lepore, Deputy Secretary of Tourism at the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development. So thank you for being here, Carrie. Thanks so much for having me, Cassandra. Thank you for all of your support for America 250PA over the years. So talk to me a little bit about your role and about tourism here in the Commonwealth. Absolutely. I have to be honest, I think I have the best job in all of state government. I am a very lucky duck that I get to uh, celebrate and uplift and talk about everything that makes Pennsylvania so unique and special and such a fantastic destination to visit. And this opportunity, as we've talked about in the past, is not only a national tourism opportunity, but also international, right? Let's talk about that a little bit. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think America 250 PA says it best. Start here. America did. This is literally the founding of democracy in Philadelphia. We helped build a country along our rivers of steel in Pittsburgh, and we are continuing to contribute in such significant and meaningful ways that I think the Pennsylvania story is the American story. And it does go way beyond the borders of our state. It goes way beyond the Northeast. This truly is not just a countrywide necessity to start in Pennsylvania as we look to celebrate our country's birthday, but it's something that we're encouraging the international market, the international visitor to also start here to put into perspective how America came to be. Well, and with tourism and because we have so much to offer here, I mean, we're biased, I know. (laughs) Um, And I love this role too, like you getting to go out and see all of the amazing communities and different things Pennsylvania has to offer. That's been one of my most favorite parts of this role as well. But with everything Pennsylvania has to offer and with tourism, talk to me about the tourism economic impact it has here in the Commonwealth currently. Yes. Tourism is big business here in Pennsylvania. In 2021, which is the most recent economic impact numbers that we have, tourism contributed $66 billion, with a B, billion dollars to Pennsylvania's economy. And something that's really important that I always like to point out is that that money isn't going back to our office. That money generated through visitation in this industry goes right back into Pennsylvania's general fund. So we help offset the costs for public safety, education, infrastructure, all of these different very critical roles that government pays is help funded through tourism. I don't know that our listeners really actually recognize that. So that's such an important fact to remember. And as we get into this episode today, we're going to talk about festivals, fun festivals across the Commonwealth. And from your experience, how important are these local, regional, county festivals across the Commonwealth? Yeah. So I have put a lot of time and thought into that question, to be honest, because when we look at our analytics on Visit PA com, the official state tourism website, we notice that every month our events continue to be the most visited popular pages, the most click-throughs, the most everything. And Pennsylvanians like to have fun. Pennsylvanians <laughs> sure do like to have fun and celebrate. And what I've really come to understand is that people need myths and stories and folklore and communion and narrative to really thrive. These events, especially the local ones where we're celebrating the local community and culture, it gives people a sense of unity, a perspective of history and giving people a sense of history and where they fit into that history, which is really reinforcing for our strong communities. So events are fun. We like to have fun, but I think not to get too deep and philosophical, but they play a really important role in creating a sense of belonging and creating a sense of community, uh, not just for Pennsylvanians, but for um, 
for neighbors all around the country and world. Carrie, how many festivals would you say you think the Commonwealth puts on? 67 counties. We are a large, yes. uh, a large Commonwealth. I hear that as I talk to my colleagues across the country, how large Pennsylvania is. How many would you say occur here? Oh my gosh. I, I don't have a number for you, but I uh, would guess it's thousands, literally. I definitely recommend people. Shameless plug here. Go to visit PA.com and check out our events listing because there is something happening literally every weekend here in our great Commonwealth. With so many festivals throughout the Commonwealth, it would take years and hundreds of podcasts to, to cover them all. So in today's podcast, we will explore three of those festivals. So thanks so much for letting me introduce you, Carrie, to our listeners, and I will let you take it from here. Hi, everyone. This is Carrie Lepore, Deputy Secretary of Tourism for the state of Pennsylvania. Let's get started. Our first stop takes us to Clarion County in the Pennsylvania wilds to the Clarion Autumn Leaf Festival, which is held annually to celebrate the fall season and the beautiful autumn foliage that the region is known for. Fun fact, this year marks the festival's 70th year. Just amazing. Joining us today is Tracy Becker, Director of the Clarion Area Chamber of Business and Industry to tell us a little more about the event. Thanks so much for joining us today, Tracy. Thank you. As you mentioned, this is our 70th anniversary. It started back in the spring of 1953. Some gentlemen were sitting around in a local restaurant having coffee, and they were looking at ways of how to draw tourism into our community. And one of the gentlemen had gone north into New York area and had commented about seeing a potato festival and brought the idea back to the gentleman. And they decided that year that in the fall that they would do something with the autumn leaves because it's really pretty around here in the fall. It's really spectacular with the rolling hills and different things. So they started it out as a two-day event. And when they started the event, they actually tied in with our university um, at the time, which was Clarion State College. Now it's Penn West University Clarion Campus. So the way that it works now with the Autumn Leaf is homecoming weekend for the university. The festival started out as two days. We're now up to nine days, 70 years later. That's just amazing. I know that this is an internationally award-winning festival. I'm sure it's grown and evolved and changed over the past 70 years. Could you talk a little bit about what visitors can expect to experience this year? Um, we have a lot of things that we've added to the schedule this year with it being the 70th. We've actually added some more children's events because people that are coming here, a lot of times it's people that have gone to the university. They're coming back for homecoming weekend. A lot of our local schools will actually do reunion parties and such. Anybody that's ever gone to school in this area, either locally or the university, they come back and visit family and friends. So we have everything. We have a lot of children's events that are free that will be held in the park, but we have a cornhole tournament. We have a car show. We have a scholarship program, which will award $3,000 out for a Miss Teen and Miss Junior Teen. We have a cultural week. We work with the university. They provide live entertainment every evening. We have live bands every night. One of our biggest events is our Farmers and Crafters show. We will have 366 vendors on Main Street on Friday, October 6th, from 2nd Avenue to 8th Avenue on both sides of um, 322. They'll be here all day from 8 to 5. Um, and what's happened is over the years, a lot of people would take that Friday off. A lot of the schools will now have that Friday off. So the kids are able to come in town to ride rides with our amusement company. And then the moms can do some shopping to get some really great sales. And then Friday night, we'll have another live band, which is a local band of former school teachers that they wanted to show their students that they can rock like everybody else. <laughs> and then on Saturday, the homecoming weekend, there's a lot of university alumni activities, but we will do our Tournament of Leaves Parade that kicks off at 12 noon, has to be over by two o'clock because that's when they do a kickoff for the football game. And then afterwards, we have a Wild World of Animals show 
followed by an oldies band, which is really popular. They're from Pittsburgh called American Pie. And then usually that evening, a lot of your schools will do class reunions. And then Sunday, we end it with a gospel band followed by an antique tractor show. So there's so many different activities that go on. Even the downtown businesses will have deal days. Um, the Immaculate Conception School and Parish will have a bake sale, and they do really well. They always sell out um, on that event. So we have a lot of nonprofit groups that will come in and set up and do things. We will have 20 different food vendors being here all week. We have an amusement company that will be here providing rides and games and activities for the kids. Well, it definitely sounds like there is something for every member of the family to see and experience and enjoy. Fantastic. And I know it attracts about 500,000 visitors a year to the Clarion area. Uh, Do you expect attendance to be a little larger this year, given that it's the 70th? I, I think so. People have been calling since the beginning of the year. Usually we, the first three weeks of the year is the busiest year in the office. We have three lines that come in and all the phone calls are asking when's autumn leave. And with this year being a 70th, everybody's excited to see what's going on. And of course the theme this year is grooving into autumn. So we're kind of like, let's bring the seventies back. Um, The logo depicts that and stuff. One of the new events that we're actually doing is we're doing a gala where we're having the opportunity where people can get dressed up, come out, Um, There'll be dinner and dancing and we'll be having some um, auctions and things like that. But it's something that was done back in the 60s and 70s here. That is something that's coming back this year. And they decided we're going to actually crown a king and queen at this event. So that ought to be fun. And we have some of the businesses will actually do tours of their businesses Like I said, there's so many different activities that take place. Awesome. So this year's 70th annual Clarion Autumn Leaf Festival is being celebrated September 30th through October 8th. Tracy, can you quickly tell us where visitors can go to get more information? They can check us out on our website, which is clarionpa.com. At the top, you'll see different tabs. They're going to look at the one that says events. When they click on that, the first one that drops down is the 70th annual Allegheny Toyota Autumn Leaf Festival. When they click on there, they have like schedule of events, directions, accommodations, and all that. So you can check us out on our, on the website. And you can also check us out on Facebook. We have the Autumn Leaf Festival Facebook page. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I know it's definitely on my fall in PA bucket list. Tracy, best of luck. Thank you. From harvest festivals to Oktoberfests, there are so many things to do in Pennsylvania this fall. Next up, we're going to head to South Central Pennsylvania in the Dutch Country Roads region of the state and make a stop in Adams County. Adams County is known for its apple orchard, so it's only fitting that here with us today are Tom and Nancy Gilbert, who serve as the chairs of the National Apple Harvest Festival. Thank you both so much for being with us today. You're welcome. You're welcome. For our listeners, they may not know that Pennsylvania ranks fourth in the United States for apple production. We know that much of that production takes place in Adams County. So can you tell us a little bit of the history of the National Apple Harvest Festival? The history of the festival, this is our 59th year uh, for the festival. Wow. Uh, The Upper Adams JCs took it over from the fruit growers in around 1964 because uh, fruit growers had actually started this festival, but it was at their time when they're harvesting all their apples. So it just didn't work out as well for them. And it was a nice project for the Upper Adams JCs to to pick up. The festival is always the first two full weekends in October. This year's dates are October the 7th and 8th and the 14th and the 15th. The festival is a fundraising project for the Upper Adams JCs, and the proceeds from the apple harvest actually comes back into the community. It takes care of our 92-acre community park known as Oakside outside of Biglaville. The other funds from there goes right back into the JCs for other their community projects. They give Christmas gifts for the kids and the community, uh, Easter egg hunt, holiday food baskets. We have movie night in the park 
many of the community organizations that we have, the Lions Clubs, the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, fire companies and sports teams also use Apple Harvest as a big fundraiser for themselves. Isn't that wonderful? Something that I personally love most about uh, festivals in Pennsylvania is that tie to community, knowing that every dollar spent impacts that local community. So congratulations on that and the success over the years. How many visitors do you normally see over those two weekends? Well, if we're fortunate and we have some good weekends, we can do around 25,000 people a day. If it rains out, we still get people come out. Of course, not as many as that. So that's a pretty good number, I think. Absolutely. I can tell you that my family contributes to that number every year. This is part of our fall tradition, being just down the road from you in Harrisburg. It's one of our our favorite festivals of the year. Can you tell folks uh, what types of attractions you have? There's a lot. Um, (laughs) It's really family-oriented. Uh, We have all kinds of arts and crafts. There's a kid's corner that features a magician, old-fashioned games. We have pony rides. We have a hay wagon ride, rock climbing wall, axe throwing, Native American dancers, a petting zoo, shingle mill, antique autos, hit and miss engines of all types, and, of course, food. Can't forget food. We've got applesauce apple jelly, apple syrup, (laughs) apple pancakes, candied apples, apple cider, and all of those things are being made right there on the fairgrounds at the different stands. What we're famous for is our pit beef sandwiches. There's always, always a big line for the pit beef sandwiches. We've got blooming onions, funnel cakes, milkshakes, barbecued chicken. We have apple dumplings, apple pizza, which is something different, Um, and an apple sausage. We've also now incorporated some local wineries and craft beers and some, uh, some distilleries. That's fantastic. So I definitely encourage everyone to come with a big, hearty appetite. In addition to all of that wonderful traditional festival foods, really the apples that I think set this festival apart. Where can our listeners get some more information? Okay, our listeners can go to our website. It is appleharvest.com. And on the website, you can purchase advance tickets. And there's a a map of the festival grounds. And it will also list the stands and music and anything else that they might want to know. There's photos. There's all kinds of stuff on that website. Absolutely. And this is something as well that there is something truly for every age, for every member of the family. Thank you so much. I'll definitely be there this year and we're looking forward to it. Best of luck. Thank Thank you. you. As we make our way across the Commonwealth, next up, we're stopping in North Central PA, specifically Northumberland County in the valleys of Susquehanna, where we are going to learn about the Milton Harvest Festival, which dates back to the 1970s. With us today is Sarah Dries, co-chair of the Princess Pageant. Thanks so much for being here today, Sarah. And I have to tell our listeners, we are literally pulling you from the festival that is going on right now. Yes, we have events going on all week long. Fantastic. So this is the 47th year. Can you tell us a little bit about the history and the things that are going on at this year's festival? Yeah, so the festival started back in 1977. Milton had two major floods happen in 1972 and 1975. So they came up with a three-day festival just to kind of bring the community together. In 1977, it started as a three-day event where they did a princess pageant, they did the tomato bowl, and they had a block party with a spaghetti dinner. Since then, we have turned it into a week-long festival. The first Saturday is our Arts and Crafts Saturday. It also involves a 28-mile bike race that is sponsored by our Rotary Club, along with a pet parade during the day. And then Saturday evening, we do the Princess Pageant, which is made up of contestants that are typically seniors in, in high school that live within the Milton School District. 
it's not your typical beauty pageant. It is uh, truly a, an experience of public speaking. They have to do a two-minute speech on stage that was written and memorized. Then they promenade in, in gowns and are asked a final question for the top five. But then we go into our Little Miss and Junior Miss pageants, which are ages five to seven and eight to 11. And then last night we held our pumpkin rolls. So people had the opportunity to purchase a pumpkin and we loaded them in a backhoe and rolled them down the hill to see whose pumpkin (laughs) could get down first. I have to know who won. (laughs) Uh, Actually, it ended up being my daughter last night. Um, (laughs) Most of the the pumpkins that are purchased are purchased by kids. So it's just a fun night to come out. Um, and they get to they pick their pumpkin, they put their number on it, they can put it wherever they want in the backo, and they just dump them down the hill. Sounds like a blast. <laughs> yes, yes, it was a lot of fun. Tonight is going to be a lot of fun too because the community gets to come together to make scarecrows. We provide the scarecrow forms, we provide the straw, the clothing. They can decorate them however they want, and then we get to display them the rest of the week in one of the fields on the parade route. Wonderful. It sounds like your event really just puts all of the best parts of a festival together for a week-long celebration. Yes, there's there's a lot of events. There's a lot of things that go into it. Um, There's a lot of people that are involved in it. Some of our bigger events are still coming up yet this week. We have a Pops concert on Thursday night. We have a band coming on Wednesday night to do a block party with some food vendors. Friday is our annual tomato bowl again for the football team. And then Saturday, we have our big parade at one o'clock. We have more arts and crafts vendors downtown. And we also have a 5K race on Saturday. Amazing, amazing. Something that I know festivals that have been in existence for as long as yours, it really is so tied to the people and places within Milton. So can you tell us a little bit how this festival celebrates the culture and heritage of Milton? Yes. So a lot of the clubs come together to help provide different entertainment. Musically, we have a Pops concert that's coming up here on Thursday, which is our choral concert. Even the band coming on Wednesday night. It's just a way to bring everyone together so that the community can come together and can celebrate all of the talent that is in this community. That's amazing. At its core, I think community is all about, like you just mentioned, it's the music, it's the food, it's the history, the tradition. That's really, really beautiful. We don't want to keep you too much longer because we understand that this year's festival is going on as we're recording this. So where should people go to learn more throughout the year about what you have planned for next year's celebration? So we have a website. Um, it is MiltonHarvestFestival.com. That you, it will keep up to date with all of the events that are happening, um, how you can get involved with it. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, uh, Milton Harvest Festival. Fantastic. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. And congratulations to your daughter again for winning last night's pumpkin roll. <laughs> thank you. Take care. Yep, you too. I can't believe the time has come to wrap up today's show. We have hardly scratched the surface of all the epic festivals across Pennsylvania. I'd like to thank all of our guests today for highlighting just a little sample of what fall is here in Pennsylvania. I'm so personally excited to get to visit so many of these amazing festivals, and I hope each of you listening today will head out and visit one too. Cassandra, you and me, girlfriend, we're going to hit the road and hopefully do some of these festivals together this fall. Thanks so much for having me here. I've learned so much and had an absolute blast. Thank you so much, Carrie, for a great first leg of the tour of the many festivals across the Commonwealth. You certainly revved the audience up to hit the road and make seasons of events the reason to explore all corners of Pennsylvania as part of their celebration of America 250 PA. Thank you again to all of our listeners today and stay tuned for additional festival podcasts throughout the year. We are thrilled to continue developing epic 
programming, projects, and events that allow all Pennsylvanians to get involved. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter and invite your family and friends to join us and become a part of history at America250PA.org. This has been the America 250 PA Start Here, America Did podcast, produced by Commonwealth Media Services. Stay tuned for more epic Pennsylvania stories at America250PA.org.